In a pub in Brooklyn, late at night, a blonde singer stares at the audience while a soft melody begins playing in the background. The girl starts singing with a soothing voice about bad breakups while her band's guitarist stares at her. The blonde girl's name's Lucy, and she's dating the guitarist, Bex. Flashbacks of their relationship start passing with moments when they were together in bed, drinking beer or just having fun. Their relationship is good. They match in their personalities, with Lucy being perky and Burks being more introspective and quiet. Lucy comes from money, and Beck's family is as middle class as they can be. Because she's rich, Lucy has a tendency to do what she wants without thinking much about the consequences. Everything seems great between them, until Lucy receives a job opportunity that will change their lives and relationship. Lucy recently sent a tape with her singing to a competition in Los Angeles, and they invited her to move there to be part of a reality show. Lucy is really excited about finally having a chance to improve her career as a singer and achieve her dream, but Bex isn't as happy. She's happy for Lucy, of course, but she doesn't like the prospect of leaving New York, and everything she has, to go to Los Angeles. She's not as lively as Lucy, and she prefers the morose air of New York to the bright, sunny life of Los Angeles. Still, Lucy convinces Bex to come with her, though will go first to establish herself in a new apartment and Bex is staying behind to tie the loose ends. Days go by, Bex finally packs her bags to hit the road with a single destiny in mind, Los Angeles. She's really excited to see her beautiful, talented girlfriend after a couple of days away. Throughout the whole lonely trip, she and Lucy talk on the phone and Lucy also seems excited to see Bex again. Some time later, Bex arrives at Lucy's new building a day early to surprise her since Lucy isn't expecting her. Bex knocks on her door with a big smile on her face, anxious to see Lucy again. Lucy opens the door with her hair disheveled and when she sees Bex there, her face pales. She is surprised and tells Bex she didn't expect her until the next day. Bex happily replies that she wanted to surprise her when a strange female voice comes from the bedroom. Then, a half blonde girl appears from Lucy's bedroom, and the smile fades from Bex's face when she realizes what's going on. Lucy closes her eyes, ashamed, and Bex storms out, angry that Lucy played her like that. Lucy tries to explain, but Bex is not hearing it. She goes away, feeling lost and betrayed. Instead of going back to the city, she goes to her mother's house in the suburbs. Her mother expects her with her arms open and Bex hugs her tightly when she arrives. She dejectedly explains to her mother, Anne, that she quit her job, sold all her things and drove all the way across the country only to support Lucy and her stupid competition. Her mother replies that she never trusted Lucy because it was obvious she seemed to be hiding something, with the amount of eyeliner she used and her wealth. Bex interrupts her, saying that she didn't like Lucy because Lucy is a woman. Anne is offended and justifies that she isn't a homophobe because she went to the gay festival that year. Bex subtly corrects Anne, and she continues, saying that she even wore a t-shirt with a rainbow on it. Bex doesn't know what to say to that, she only chuckles at her mother's cliché defense. Anne adds that it doesn't matter to her if Bex is dating a man, a woman or a Bex tells her mom that she's going to sleep for a bit, and before she goes, her mother stops her. Lovingly holding Bex's face, she compliments Bex saying that she's smart, bright, talented and beautiful, and she deserves to have a supportive woman next to her. Bex goes to her childhood room to sleep. It remains the same as when she moved out, and Bex nostalgically walks around, staring at her posters and pictures with fond memories. Couple of weeks later, Bex is feeling down in the dumps and dejected as she watches TV and eats cereal in her mother's living room. Her mother arrives back home from her women's group meeting, and tells Bex that she could come with her next time. Bex sarcastically replies that she and her mom probably have some differences, when talking about women's groups. Her mother notices how sad and gloomy Bex is, and decides that she has had enough. She turns the TV off and tells Bex to go out of the house and do something with herself instead of staying home, and pining for Lucy. Bex takes her mother's not-so-subtle advice and decides to go out. She isn't feeling very excited by the prospect of facing life again, but it's time for her to figure out what to do without Lucy. She goes to the city and starts gluing flyers offering guitar lessons. After gluing all her flyers, she calls an old friend of hers from her hometown and meets him at his bar. Her friend's name is Dave, and he is the owner of Perfectos, an old-school bar with a pool table and an old, lonely man drinking in the middle of the afternoon. Dave asks how life has been to Bex and she explains that she's broke, single and living with her mom. Dave jokingly replies that he's a billionaire sleeping with a bunch of women every night, so he can't relate. They talk and drink for some time. Bex explains her hard breakup with Lucy with the wistfulness of a recent breakup, and that Lucy moved on with a younger, hotter girl while she's there, drinking and offering guitar lessons to strangers. Dave offers Bex to play at his bar, even if it's not a big or fancy place. Bex accepts it. After her meeting with Dave, Bex gets out of her funk and starts getting control of her life again. She cleans up around her mother's house, fixes broken things and organizes her mother's mess. While she's organizing her mother's cabinets, she finds a green box filled with pictures of her mom and dad. One picture in particular catches her attention. It's her father when he was younger. She stares at it for a moment before taking it to put in her bedroom. 
Later on, when her mother arrives, she is surprised that Bex organized the house. They talk about Anne's day, and Bex indulges her mother until she tries to organize a dinner date with a man from Bex High School that was a bully. Bex is exasperated that her mother is trying to set a date with a man, knowing that Bex likes women, and tells her no. Before her mother goes on another monologue, she quickly leaves her and goes to her room to eat alone. After eating her mother's leftovers, she morosely sits and stares at her father's picture. At Dave's bar, Bex is getting ready to play for a handful of patrons. As she introduces herself, she tells everyone that she's friends with Dave and that he was the first and only man she has slept with. She makes some lame jokes about her relationship with Dave and starts playing. Her song is about heartbreak and a woman leaving after breaking up with someone. As she plays, she remembers Lucy. The song is a success amongst the patrons and she receives a lot of tips. After her concert, she and Dave are talking and she asks about one of the patrons. It's the same man that her mother tried to set her up with, and Bex remembers that he outed her during prom, calling her a Veil Dictorian. Dave laughs at her, but says that the guy, Mitch, has changed for the better. Bex is reluctant to accept that a bully could have changed that much, and Dave tries to convince her that he's a nice guy. Bex jokingly says that Mitch the bully is now Mitch the rich, and implies that's the reason people forgot how he used to be. Back at her mother's house, Anne has the green box with pictures opened and she's also going through the memories stored there. Bex arrives and tells her mother that she found the box when she was cleaning and saw pictures of her mom. Anne used to be a nun, but she resigned when she realized it wasn't for her. Bex sits with her mother and they share memories of when Bex was younger. She grabs a picture of her mother's marriage and mentions Anne and her father were really young when they got married. Anne says that she was actually 28, and Bex sarcastically replies that she's 34 with no marriage prospects in the future. Bex stares at her father and comments that she doesn't remember him looking so healthy, then laughs at a picture of her young mother in a habit, asking if it was at that age when she betrayed her faith to be with her father. Anne notices that Bex is drinking and wonders if she has been drinking all night, and Bex defensively says it's not like that, that she's not drunk. Her mother replies that she needs to be careful because drinking problems can be hereditary. Bex assuages her by saying she is responsible when it comes to drinking. Anne looks doubtful but doesn't say anything else. The following day, Bex goes to a thrift shop to look at some clothes. A petite blonde saleswoman shows up to ask if Bex needs help, and she answers that the clothes are too expensive for her. The woman tells Bex that she was at the bar the night of her performance and Bex remembers that she was with Mitch. She tells her that she went to high school with Mitch. The woman introduces herself as Elez and starts making small talk with her. She wonders if Bex is her stage name and Bex says that it is just short for Mary Rebecca. Elez replies that she really liked Bex's music and asks if she will play again. Bex answers that she hopes so because she's broke. Bex finds a leather jacket that she likes and tells Elize she'll give her $30 for the jacket. Elize awkwardly informs her that the jacket costs $300 even though it's used. In disbelief, Bex puts the jacket back and asks if it comes with $270 in its pocket. Before she leaves, she asks Elize if she can put one of her flyers in her store, and Elize says yes. As Bex leaves, Elize stares at her with a bit of wonder, probably because Bex is different from the general audience that Elize meets. At night, Bex goes to Perfectos to play again. This time, there's a lot more people, and in her nervousness, Bex resorts to self-deprecating jokes that nobody but herself finds funny. She sings a song about a girl that lied and fooled another, an obvious tribute to Lucy and how she deluded Bex while they were dating. Elize is there watching again and Bex smiles when she notices her. She receives a lot of tips again and Dave informs her that she has some groupies waiting for her. The groupies are Elize's group of friends, and Dave says that she's bringing a bunch of paying customers to the bar so Bex should say hi to her. Bex approaches Elize's table and she and her friends start clapping for her. The women seem to have liked Bex's songs, and one of them even says that Bex seemed sad while playing it. Elize introduces her friends and they make small talk about their high school, which was a private school for rich girls. After some time talking, Bex says she needs to go but they insist she stays and have a drink with them. Elize even asks her to sit next to her on the table. The women start talking about how Bex is the first they've ever hung out with, which is uncomfortable for Bex, while Elize tries to change the topic. She asks Bex how she comes up with her songs, but before she can answer, one of the women mentions Elize is a singer too. Elize denies it, and when one of her friends says that she even did guitar lessons once, Bex hops in and says she can teach her if she wants. Elize is bashful, but she thanks Bex anyway and tells her that she can't do what she does. The following morning, Anne wakes Bex up to go to church with her. Bex has a massive hangover, and the last thing she wants is to go to church that early after drinking the night before. Her mother is relentless and practically drags her out of bed. She even gives Bex her sister's old dress so that she can go wearing something appropriate. Bex snidely says that she's Jewish, but her mother forces her to go, saying that since she's living rent-free, the least she can do is go to church with her. 
Bex wears the hideous dress and even brushes her hair back from her face. Her mother happily sings the hymns while Bex silently seats. After an hour there, Bex is annoyed and leaves without her mother. While she's having lunch outside, she stalks Lucy on the internet, only to find out that she's dating the blonde girl she cheated on Bex with. While she's angrily going through all of Lucy's pictures with her new girlfriend, she receives a call from an unknown caller. When she answers, she's surprised to see that it's Elise. Elise fumbles a bit to explain that she wants to have guitar lessons. She seems unsure about talking to Bex, not that Bex notices. She agrees to teach Elise. Next day, she goes to Elise's house in the rich part of town. Elise resides in a big, brick house that Bex sarcastically calls a mortgage brochure. When she enters the house, it's even more beautiful inside. Elise mentions that it isn't her style, though, because her mother was the one to decorate the house for her. They go to the living room where there's a spread of cheese and grapes for them to eat. Bex eats a grape while still in awe of the big house and she wonders how Mitch can afford a place like that. Elise explains that Mitch works for her dad, which can only mean that the rich one in the relationship is Elise, not Mitch. After some small talk, they begin their lessons. Bex corrects Elise when needed and reassures the blonde when she's nervous about her mistakes. When the class ends, Elise writes Bex a check and asks how she's getting used to living in a small city since she used to reside in New York. Bex answers that it's fine because it's cheaper, and Elise asks if it's hard to find other women to date. Bex replies that it's not because she knows where to look. Before she can say anything else, Mitch suddenly appears. Elise asks if he remembers Bex, and he says he does remember Bex the wreck. Bex laughs uncomfortably. They make more small talk, though Bex is dying to leave already. Before she can go, Mitch invites her to go out to have dinner with them, but she denies and lies, saying that she has another lesson to go to. She leaves and grabs a bite in a deli before going home. Her mother is video chatting with her older sister, Lizzie. She calls Bex to talk to her sister, and Bex grabs a beer and drags herself to stand in front of the webcam. Her sister makes fun of her and the fact she returned to their mother's house, to which Bex replies that it's not permanent. Lizzie proceeds to talk about Lucy and how she knew it wasn't going to work between them because Lucy had money. Bex interrupts her and tells her to text her when she has another kid. She goes to the living room and listens while her mother complains that her sister never comes to visit with her grandchildren. There is a ruckus in the background of the call, and soon, the call ends. During her next gig at Perfectos, though she sings a song about a father that needs to let his kid go, Bex replays her memories with Lucy again. Next day, she has another lesson with allies. They are more comfortable with each other, and Bex even opens up about her living situation with her mother. She never had such a good mother-daughter relationship and after her dad died, she almost never visited her mom. She wants to go back to New York after she makes some more money. Elise argues that their hometown is not bad, and Bex answers that it's at least better than Los Angeles, and that maybe the problem is not the place, but the people. Realizing that Bex doesn't have many friends in town, Elise decides to invite her to a barbecue at her place on the weekend. Bex replies that she wants to meet people that are more like her, to which Elise jokingly tells her not to be a snob and that the barbecue will be good for her. In the end, Elise convinces Bex to come. The day of the barbecue arrives. Elise introduces Bex to everyone at the party, including the same friends from the bar. Her friends mention that Elise is really into guitar after meeting Bex, and before they continue gossiping about her, she interrupts and asks if Bex wants something to drink. Bex accepts it, and Elise leaves her with her friends to grab a beer for her. When Elise comes back, she's not alone. She brings with her another friend, Amy, and introduces Bex to her in the hopes that they are going to hit it off and maybe date. After the introductions, they leave Amy and Bex alone to talk. Bex asks Amy if that kind of setup happens a lot to her and Amy says yes, but that at least Bex is cute. They laugh about the situation and start talking about their lives. Amy asks what Bex is doing in a small town, and Bex explains, without mentioning Lucy and how broke she is, that she moved from New York for some time. Bex asks how the scene is in the city and Amy tells her there are a couple of places they can go to meet new people. She even offers to take Bex there right away and Bex accepts. They ditch the barbecue, and while they are leaving, Elies observes them. They go to a bar and Bex finally has the opportunity of getting over Lucy. She meets a girl there and goes home with her. The following morning, she wakes up hungover again and next to the girl from the bar. She turns around to see the girl, who's still sleeping, and notices a teddy bear tattoo on her back. Bex instantly regrets spending the night and gets up to go home. When she arrives home, her mother is waiting for her. Anne asks where Bex spent the night and Bex only says that she was out. Anne complains that Bex didn't pick up her phone and that she was worried, which for Bex is an exaggeration. She asks her mother to calm down and Anne tells her that she couldn't sleep all night wondering where she was. Bex sarcastically replies that it's not that hard to imagine, and Anne quotes the Bible, saying that whoever conceals their sins does not prosper. Bex gets mad and tells her she's not her father, and her mother implies that Bex was using illicit 
Their argument gets worse when Beck says that her mother nagged her dad to death, and that she has too much on her plate to worry about her mother's sensibilities. Her mother storms out and leaves Bex alone and angry. In the following scene, Bex is nursing her hangover alone. Next day, she makes breakfast for her mother and tries to make small talk to her, but Anne completely ignores her. Noticing her mother's cold shoulder, Bex tries to apologize by saying that she was hungover, but Anne retorts that she didn't deserve to be treated that badly. She also asks Bex to stop speaking the Lord's name in vain in her house, to which Bex apologizes. They make up and Bex invites her mother to have a girl's day with her. They go to Eliza's store and Bex introduces the two of them. Eliza cheekily asks if Bex's talents come from her mother and Anne replies that it does. Anne gets excited to learn that Eliza is married to Mitch, who is her friend's son. Bex informs Eliza that she brought her mother there to buy her a new wardrobe. When they choose Anne's new clothes and go pay, it's more than $300. Anne tries to help Bex pay, but she refuses. Eliza, noticing that Bex isn't too well off, decides to put the leather jacket that Bex liked as a gift for her. Bex loves it and Eliza watches as she puts on the jacket with a soft expression. Anne goes back home after shopping with Bex, and Bex and Eliza go to Dave's bar. They talk about their mothers for a time, Eliza says her mother is a shrew and Bex makes fun of her. Eliza wonders how Anne reacted to Bex being a and Bex replies that she's beginning to understand her. Eliza subtly asks about Amy, and Bex answers that though she's cool, she's not her type. That she prefers girls that are more feminine. Eliza wonders how she understood she was a and Bex tells her the story. She was in college and she had a crush on a girl, but she didn't want to have that crush so she decided to be intimate with a guy to try and get it out of her system. It didn't work and Bex understood that she didn't like men. While she's talking, Eliza is really interested and into the story. They are interrupted by her phone ringing. Her husband is at home and sent her a message for her to go back home. They say goodbye with a hug while Dave covertly watches. After Eliza leaves, he tells Bex that she's married to one of his friends, and Bex replies that she doesn't want to sleep with every girl she comes in contact with. Dave disagrees and says that it's obvious she wants to have something with Eliza, but Bex denies it and says that it's nothing to worry about. At their next guitar lesson, they play and sing together. They have great chemistry as singers, so Bex asks Elias to play with her at Perfectos on her next gig. Elias thinks Bex hit her head and is hallucinating, but Bex reassures her that she would do great. She has stage fright, though, and she's sure she's going to pass out on the stage with a bunch of people watching. Bex is relentless and tells her she doesn't have a choice because it's part of their lesson. Elias finally accepts with the promise that it will be only one song. When Bex is leaving Eliza's house, she once again decides to stalk Lucy to obsessively watch her moving on. She also calls her brother, Pete, to ask if he wants to hang out with her. During her daily gig at Dave's bar, Bex sings a song about chasing after someone, and while she sings, she stares at Eliza. Eliza's friends and her husband are there too, but they don't pay attention to Bex singing. Eliza is the only one absorbed in her music and in her, not that Bex notices. Next day, Bex is at home doing nothing when she sees an ad for a new reality show with Lucy starring in it. Bex is disgusted that Lucy ended up doing junk TV programs that have nothing to do with her dream to sing. She spends the day angry after watching her ex on TV. During her gig, she sings about being fooled by someone again before she calls a nervous Elias to sing with her. Side by side, Elias and Bex are total opposites. Elias is wearing a conservative summer dress, and she looks like a doll with her blonde hair and bright blue eyes. Bex, on the other hand, is wearing the leather jacket and jeans, with her dark hair slicked back. She looks like a rock star. They start playing the song and can't stop looking at each other. It's beautiful and Elias is really excited when it's over. While they are celebrating, Bex is infected by Elias's happiness and excitement and ends up kissing her. Elias hesitantly kisses back, and Bex, noticing it, steps away. She starts apologizing but Elias grabs her face and kisses her again. Next day, Pete arrives at Anne's house. Bex is really happy to see him. Pete is like a male version of Bex, though his life is even worse than hers. Bex and Pete hang out in her room and start drinking in the middle of the day. Bex tells him that she's actually enjoying spending time in their hometown, and that she met some nice people, namely allies. Her brother notices right away that there's a woman involved in his sister's decision to stay there for longer, and asks her about it. Bex refuses to answer who the mystery girl is, and they start playing guitar and singing. Anne overhears them and gets emotional that two of her kids are back in her house after so long. Bex and Elias sleep together at her house during their guitar lessons. They are lying down on the bed talking, when Elias confesses that Mitch doesn't notice anything in their life, he didn't even notice when she changed her hair. Bex tells her that she would notice it. Elias stops talking about Mitch and complains that the issue isn't him, but her and her boring life. Bex mockingly says she's offended that Elias is bored while she's with her, and starts kissing her. Elias is on top of the world, giggling and having Bex full attention on her. At night, Bex goes drinking again, this time with Dave. She doesn't tell him she's sleeping with Elias, after all, he warned her not to because she's married. At home, she spends time with her mother and brother, something she hadn't done ever since her father died. Pete and her hang out a lot, and are always drinking something. 
One day, while they are walking in a park, Elise cancels her plans to meet with Bex, which upsets her. Her brother notices and asks about it, but Bex only says it won't work anyway. Pete asks if she fell for a straight girl again, and Bex finally confesses that the girl she's seeing is married to none other than Mitch Cunningham. Pete finds it funny and says that if their mom finds out, she's going to freak out. Bex says that Elise is pretty and and Pete tells her to stay then, because he wants to see the drama unfold. Bex sends Elise a message, telling her to meet her at her mother's house, if they can't meet at hers because of Mitch. Elise accepts it. Later on, they are lying in Bex's childhood bedroom, and Bex talks about how being with a man never felt right for her. Not the way she feels with Elise. When she tells Elise that, her bright and happy mood sours. Elise turns away from Bex, and when Bex asks her what happened, she tells her that she doesn't know what she's doing with her life. She explains to Bex that she's going to leave eventually and Elise will have to go back to her boring life with a husband that doesn't notice her. She starts crying and Bex tries to comfort her. She asks Elise what would happen if she didn't leave, and Elise scoffs and replies that she had a foot out of the door since she got back. Bex wonders if Elise would divorce Mitch to stay with her, and Elise kisses her instead of answering. They get intimate again, and while they are in the throes of passion, Anne opens the door to Bex's room and catches them in the act. Anne sends them a look of disapproval and leaves the room. Elise starts crying because Anne is her mother-in-law's best friend. Bex doesn't know what to say or do. After Elise leaves, Bex goes to Dave's bar to drown her sorrows and Next day, she tries calling Elise but it goes straight to voicemail. She asks Elise if they can talk about what happened and to call her back when she can. Things get worse when Pete abruptly leaves, telling Bex that he can't handle their mother drama because he heard her crying the whole night. Bex tries to make him stay, but he tells her that some families are better off apart. After he leaves and Elise doesn't call her back, she goes to her house. Mitch answers the door and he looks confused when he sees Bex there. He tells her that Elise isn't home, she's at the mall with her mom, and even offers to call her if she needs to talk to her. Bex tells him it's not necessary, that she probably mixed up her schedule. Mitch notices that she's acting weird and offers her a beer. Bex tries to deny it, but he insists. He says that he needs to talk to her about something. Bex begrudgingly enters the house. Mitch hands her a beer and tries to make small talk about baseball, but Bex doesn't watch it. It's awkward for a moment and she doesn't know how to act around him. After all, his wife cheated on him with her. Mitch surprises her by thanking her for giving Elie's lessons because it changed her for the better. Bex says it's okay and he confesses to her that they have been trying to have a kid for a while, but it's been hard. Because of that, Elise had been down and feeling like a failure before the lessons. But after she met Bex, she started singing around the house and practicing the guitar when Mitch goes to bed. He thinks the lessons have been a nice distraction to Elise. Unbeknownst to him, his words are like a punch in the gut for Bex. It's almost as if he's calling her a mere distraction to Elise. She swallows hard and replies that she's glad that she could help Elise with her lessons. Mitch asks her not to tell Elise that he told her that, so she doesn't think he's talking about her behind her back. He even tells Bex to continue doing whatever it is she's doing to make Elias so happy. Bex goes back home feeling worse than ever. Her mother is sitting alone on the table, crying. Bex approaches her and Anne starts to vent that Pete left without saying goodbye to her. Bex tries to talk about what happened with Elias, but Anne doesn't want to. She tells Bex that seeing it was enough for her and that she's probably thinking about leaving soon. Bex asks if her mother is kicking her out, and Anne answers that she's not sure if her house is the right place for her anymore. Bex says that she thought Anne liked having her there, but Anne replies that maybe distance is better for them. That she doesn't want Bex disrespecting her house that way. Bex chokes on her tears as she tells her mother that she's an adult, that it's normal for her to be intimate with someone and that it was unfortunate that her mother saw her in the middle of it. Her mother snaps that it was disgusting. Bex gets defensive and accuses her mother that no matter how many pride parades she goes, she won't ever accept the fact that she likes women. Anne tells her to get over herself, that she's disgusted because she seduced a confused woman who happens to be married to her friend's son. Bex tearfully says she's in love with allies, but Anya scoffs in disbelief because Bex said two months back that she was in love with Lucy. She thinks Bex doesn't take people's feelings into consideration, and that her being a doesn't excuse her selfishness. To make Bex feel even worse, Anne says that she had a nice life before Bex showed up and that she's not going to let her take that away from her. Bex doesn't have anything to say to that. It hurts that her own mother thinks that about her. A few moments pass in silence until Bex breaks it and tells her mother that she will leave in the morning. Later that same night, Bex sends a message to Elise and she agrees to meet her. Bex asks if she's okay, and Elise says no. Bex starts crying and apologizing while Elise comforts her. She kisses Elise and tells her that she has to leave for New York. Elise is speechless, and when Bex asks her to come with her to New York, Elise only kisses her. They stay like that for some time, Bex crying and kissing Elise, and Elise in dumbfounded silence. A few moments pass like that until Elise asks what she is going to do about Mitch, and Bex replies that she doesn't want him. She wants her. They sleep together in Bex's car and in the morning, Elise tells Bex she has to go. Bex informs Elise that she's going to go home, grab her things and be back in an hour to grab her. 
Eli solemnly says okay and turns to leave. Before she can go, Bex tells her she loves her, and Eli's replies that she loves her too. Bex packs her bags and Eli's does the same in her house, afraid that Mitch is going to notice something is wrong. Bex leaves without saying goodbye to her mother, not that Anne cared. She goes to Dave's bar for one last time and plays to a few patrons. While singing about running away and not knowing where to go, she remembers earlier, when she went to Eliza's house to grab her and saw her saying goodbye to Mitch. Instead of telling Eliza she's there, she watches the blonde from a distance, seeing her looking lost and confused. Bex starts crying in her car and decides to leave without Eliza, probably because she thinks Eliza isn't making the right decision. As for Eliza, she nervously waits for Bex with her packed bags, but she never shows up. When she realizes that Bex left her without even saying goodbye, she starts crying. Some time later, Bex is back in New York, now as the lead singer in a band, and she sings the same song she sang after leaving her hometown, and Eli's behind. She and Eli's never meet again.